Hey, all my 3D printing family, I am Mark and this is Upgrades Complete. Um, this is not an unboxing, traditionally speaking. Um, this is a refurbished printer and this is a refurbished printer. And I purchased these both from Comgro. Now, as you can see, this is a Creelty CR10V3, not a cheap printer. I paid $287 delivered to my door. This is a CR10 Mini. Paid about $140 max delivered to the door. I'll have the exact amounts um, on the description. Um, I looked around on YouTube and a few other sites and I couldn't find much on the unboxing of a refurbished printer. Now, believe me, I know all the headaches that can be in here. Um, we can be talking about messed up extruders, jammed up nozzles, scratched up beds, but from Comgro's site and from their customer service these machines should be as good as new if not better so I thought why not put them to the test I'm not bound by any affiliate restrictions um, I spent my own money so I can be honest with you and if this is junk it gets sent back uh, they do have the full warranty so I'm not worried about it there. I figure first what we'll do is start with the CR10 V3. Um, I'm gonna unbox her, put her on the table. We've seen assembly and time lapses a hundred times, so I'm not gonna go through all that with you. But as I put it together, um, if there's any issues that do creep up, I'm going to stop the video and point it out. And um, hopefully the next time you see this machine, it's powered up. So stay tuned and like and subscribe. This is going to get interesting. And we have it all together. She's plugged into her power management plug, uh, which you haven't seen my previous shorts. Get yourself an $8 Wi-Fi enabled smart monitoring plug. That will let you know power usage on any machine, on anything in your house that you have plugged into it. I have them all over the house so you can monitor and know if there's a problem before you have a problem. But we're not here for that, we're here for this. And I am about as nervous as I could be right now. Um, I already checked I'm on my US settings, make sure, double check, triple check. And, uh, oof, moment of truth. Fans blowing, nice, nice and cool. There's the welcome cruelty sign. Come on. CR10 V3 ready. Well, let's see how ready it is. I'm not going to waste any time. Let's go right into prepare. And let's auto home it. And. Nice. Nicer. Come on. Oh, perfect. And mind you, I have full load on these springs right now. Uh, nothing's leveled, nothing's dialed in. Awesome. If this is what Creelty calls refurbished, uh, or Comgro calls refurbished, I couldn't be happier. Uh, this is awesome. So, let me power her off. Give it a second. I like a nice 10 count before I restart a machine of any kind. Okay. If we're going to get an error message, we'll get it now. Nope. Perfect. Okay, awesome. And here she is, the Creelty CR10 V3 refurbished from Comgro, delivered to my door in three days for under $300. Powered up beautifully. There's not a mark on this machine. Everything is perfect. There was never any filament run through this machine whatsoever. 
the bed, of course, I already flipped it. And if you followed me, you know I just prefer a smooth glass surface as opposed to the bumps on the other side. The only defect being this screw, which is fine. I just have it sitting in here so I don't lose it. Um, it's bent, which is allow not allowing the nut to go any further. And something I noticed um, right off the bat with the tool bag, because I use, of course, my own tools. I don't use these. This, this wrench is jacked. So if somebody tried to force the nut and strip the bolt, um, and they either put way, way, way too much force on a nut that should have went right on, or the screw was actually bent from the factory, um, and they just tried to get past it. Luckily, they didn't damage the support arm at all, so I'm happy there. Um, extra parts. Um, another pair of snips. Wasn't expecting. Happy to have them. Another scraper, great. Eight gigabyte SD card, that was expected, maybe. Uh, what wasn't was the uh, adapter for it, and as well as for a micro SD to USB. Great, nice added bonus. Some cable management, of course, our tool bags, a piece that I have to figure out, and if you know what this is, let me know, because I have no idea. Um, an extra limit switch, which is really nice to have around, a few extra tips, and a bag of garbage. Um, honestly, that's all it is. If it's not Capricorn, it's not going on my machine. The next thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to take this apart um, and take the measurements to replace that garbage tubing with some Capricorn tubing. And so we know we're not going to have any problems down the line have to take this apart. So here we are back at the bed of the machine. And one of the reasons I picked the CR10V3 was because it can run for a long period of time and this I got for long duration prints. This is my first really large printer. I am beyond thrilled to start getting printing on it but there's a few things that need to be done. And the first thing is the Capricorn tubing. Now they use the stock Bowden tubing, the white stuff. You can see some sticking out of the top here. This is a small section used as a filament guide. What a lot of people don't know is there is Bowden tubing in there. Um, and I want to get that stock stuff out and replace it with the Creelty Capricorn tubing. Um, no crazy modifications there. But this is something durability, reliability-wise that is a must do in my book um as like i said if you're running long prints you want to make sure that your components hold up and the other thing is since this is a refurb unit i want to get a look in there and make sure nothing's melted there's no filament sticking there because even though it looks great from the top i don't know what the insides look like and i think you're about as curious as i am so I'm going to get it taken apart and take a look at it. These here are two millimeter screws, the top two. The bottoms are 2.5 hex. So make sure you have it in your iFix toolbox. And it makes life a lot easier when you have to, don't have to go searching for Allen keys. So here we are at the back of our hot end direct drive assembly. As you can see, I removed it. And just for those that don't know, this is a two millimeter, a two millimeter, a 2.5 millimeter, a 2.5 millimeter, and a long 2.5 millimeter. This is longer than the others. Now, notice different heads. These have the same, these are the lower. Your little button heads go on the top. Uh, this is just something you want to keep, keep, take note of, and don't leave them sitting on your bed. I'm just doing this to be able to show you, but make sure they're labeled, secured, and you know where they go. Now, something you may have noticed earlier in the video was this cable here was touching the bed. It was all oriented wrong. Um, this gives me a chance to reorient everything and set up my cable management the way I want to. So I'm going to crack her open, which isn't much at this point, and we'll take a look at the inside. So the next step is to take these two screws out, remove this fan assembly, and then flip it around to the other side and take these four screws out, disassembling the fan on this end. So I'm trying to get a good look in here, and as expected, everything looks brand new. Um, 
my suspicions were confirmed. It doesn't look like any filament had ever been run through this machine, but I did find one little issue. The fan that I popped out, uh, the wires right in this slot here, you can see they go through the side. Uh, the wires were crimped in there pretty badly and it was starting to damage the insulation. Uh, that could have happened a million different ways, but it's just one of those things that you need to look out for. I'm going to pull out my calipers and uh, we'll figure out the exact length. Now, really simply, how to check out um, the Bowden tubing inside, and it's going to be hard to do this one-handed, is you peel off this. And that's what we want to say. Next thing I'm going to do is take out those screws there. Um, the looks like the rubber bushings are in place. Um, the tip is brand new, so I'm not even going to bother on replacing it. It looks good. But as soon as I get this off, you're going to see the Bowden tubing. And that's what we're going to be replacing with the Capricorn. And we're also going to see how much of a distance there is in the Bowden tubing, if any, that would have caused a problem um, leaks and clogs so this is the most important part and this is actually why we are I'm, I'm doing this okay so they're removed and for those wondering um, these are 1.5 screws in here and this is the moment of truth this is why I had to do all of this is this will slide out and um, wow Okay, was really, really, really not expecting that. Um, that Bowden tubing usually comes out with the tip. So this machine, I don't think this thing was ever powered up. And this, this is what we're replacing with Capricorn tubing. Um, you can actually see some imperfections on the inside. This is not a refurb problem. This is just straight out from the manufacturer. And you can actually see it. it's got a bend to it. Wow. Um, yeah, so, okay, to me, this was worth taking apart to get to this. Now, um, I'm going to measure the proper length because I believe this is a little, few millimeters off or might even be less than that. But I'm going to measure this out with the Bowden tube versus the actual assembly and see how much of this we need to replace. Now, I got this piece of Bowden tubing as straight as I possibly could. Both ends were actually kind of cut on an angle. And I get 81.1 .1 millimeters on the caliper. Well, when I measured everything else, this is supposed to be 81.47. Uh, not that much of a difference, but enough to allow gunk to build up by your head. Um, filament enough to cause a jam um not by much so this is actually pretty accurate but i am actually going to cut a piece of capricorn to exactly 81.47 i'm going to go with 47 because it, it it was right there so hey all um got to what really should have been the easiest part of this reassembly and i went to slide a piece of filament through and the tiny piece of Bowden tubing that they have pre-installed from the factory is, um, I don't know. I, I've really never seen this before. It had so much force on it, you couldn't put filament into it. Uh, I can't hold this against ComGrow. I'm going to say it was a defect with the tubing, or maybe it was exposed to too much heat. Um, I don't think front of the machine, maybe during the manufacturing process, but getting this out has been a nightmare and I didn't have a choice because filament would not go through it. It was completely blocked. So that's actually pretty wild. Um, I've never come across that before. This should slide in and out. It's just a piece of filament, uh, just a piece of Bowden tubing. Um, so yeah, it's always the little things that hold you up. Uh, as you can see, this end was completely blocked, and that's why filament wouldn't pass through it. I had no option but to get this out, and, I mean, you can see what I had to do. I used every tool in my arsenal into 
up to and including threading this so I could have a good grip to pull out by via screw with a pair of pliers. Uh, and that didn't work. Finally, I was able to just get out enough to get to pull it apart. Because remember, you don't want to damage this unit. Whatever was on the end of that Bowden tube caused a clog here. So using filament and taking this back part, I was able to free it up and get it out of here. Hey, here we are back at the CR10 V3 hot end and uh, wild, wild build. I have to give a shout out to uh, Mike over at RM3D because after the disaster of removing that um, defected Bowden tube, um, I needed to walk away. I watched some videos. Uh, I just took a break overnight and... Mike showed the reassembly of his um, when he was doing a fan shroud modification that I'd been considering doing on this machine. Now, um, but that watching the videos gave me the idea of putting running a piece of filament through the new piece of Capricorn I have up here. And if you can see, of course, you know, this slides in and out, unlike the white one that was jammed in there and took me over an hour and a half to get out i ran it all the way through then i slipped over slipped my bowden tube over it and then put my end piece into place and it all lined up perfectly the screws lined up perfectly and now i know for sure that i'm not going to have any problems with my filament loading because here it is okay so real quickly i wanted to remind everybody about these wires the fan wires here that were um crimped and it was actually starting to affect the insulation. And this is one a brand new machine. Uh, I just took an X-Acto knife and went in here and just trimmed out a little bit. And I put a little piece of black tape over top of where it was caught up before. And it only really started touching the surface of the outside of the insulation. But that's it. Um, next, put the fans back on. And um, I want to get it mounted up. And we're going to run our first print really happy with the ease of how it went back together and as an added bonus i was able to untwist a wire and get the cables where they're not going to be sitting on the bed when um the z-axis is lowered so that's just an added bonus and as you can see i left that piece of filament in as a guide i will um, remove that and put in um some fresh filament um actually i'm going to use brand new out of the package just to make sure that our first print is of good quality so i am going to get it on the table powered up and we are going to run our first get our calibrated first and then uh run our first print um which is probably going to be a different mount for the filament run out sensor um because it's straight up vertically when it really should be on a 45. Um, but that's something I'm going to look on the net. I'm sure it's out there. Um, I think Mike over at RM3D came up with something for it. And, um, you know, of course our upgrades, but we're going to deal with that later. Right now, I just want to make sure the stock refurbished machine is as good as they claim. And so far... It's been perfect. Um, the only defect being um, the one stripped screw, no big deal. And the second being um, that half inch piece of Capricorn tubing that was jamming everything up and not letting filament run through. So both those things together let me know this machine was never fully built. Therefore, there should be no mileage on this machine whatsoever. I'm really just blown away i'm really happy and uh as soon as i'm done with this i'm moving right on to the cr10 mini uh that i bought refurbished at the exact same time so we could do a side by side and see if the quality is consistent 